So good morning. As I leave the Woodfield Arms bed and breakfast. Uh, room did its job, it was fine. It was very the bed was very, very comfy. Um it was blooming hot on the third floor though, I'll tell you that. I've had a little bit of rain in the night, so it's a little bit cooler this morning. It's just took the uh, took the edge off that heat. Um, it's almost 7.30. Actually, I need to start my tracker. Um, uh, so yeah, because of the heat, I did have the window open quite a bit last night, and with the pub being across the road, you know what it's like. It was quite noisy, but I'd had a couple of pints there myself, so I did manage to sleep, and I slept really well, actually. All right, this is where I left the trail yesterday. I came from there and I went left going to check though. But here we go. The guidebook tells of a crumbling tower which you pass. I'm assuming that is probably it, which is having quite a bit of restoration work done to it. Uh, it's not clear what it once was. It's thought it was either a windmill or a lookout tower. Now, doesn't that place look grand? Very early on in the journey, I know, but I must just say, very well signposted so far. Mm, I can't figure out what it says. Moyle, Ol, Ol something school. Oh, well, let's see if I can get that off. So, you can see it now. Moyle Old School Lane. Overgrown along here because it rained in the night, everything's wet. I'm just getting soaked. State, It's all right, I'm just walking past. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. And there's a big fella. Just a quick comment back on the uh, room that I had, Woodfield Arms. Uh, they do offer breakfast for an extra £6.95, I think it is. But the earliest breakfast sitting was eight o'clock and I was up and ready and wanting to get going at 7.30. So I decided not to take up the breakfast. Um, I haven't paid for it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I did nip to the Tesco in uh, Chepstow last night and got, got some croissants, so I had some croissants for breakfast. So, there is the option of breakfast should you wish, but I chose not to. Seven Bridge back in the distance. Somebody goes to a lot of effort to keep their bush nicely trimmed. Offer's Dyke, Tidenham section. An earthwork built by Offer, the powerful Anglo-Saxon King of Mercia, to establish a frontier between his kingdom and the Welsh. The dyke consisted of a high bank and a wide, deep ditch and can be traced with gaps from the River Severn to the Dee. This two-mile section is in the care of English heritage. Is this it? I'm in a bit of a ditch here, is this it? I mean, it doesn't look very cared for. <laughs> Devil's Pulpit, one and a quarter miles. Probably a good time then to raise the fact that the Offers Dyke Path is 50 years old this year. I assume somebody's left that there for that reason. Um, so yeah, the trail was opened as a trail, that is, of course, in 1971. It's now 2021. Not a nice climb up again by the looks of it. And another notice board, so I'll have a quick read. Offer's Dyke is a formidable earthwork, begun AD 785 by order of King Offer. Oh, sorry, Offer, King of Mercia and stretching for 82 miles roughly along the English-Welsh border. Mercia was a huge Anglo-Saxo kingdom covering most of central England. 
the dike marked its western frontier bordering Welsh territory. Originally about 27 metres wide and 8 metres high, it also served as a symbol of offers great power. This three mile section is in the care of English heritage. For a long time now I've been walking along this path with trees either side and you can see in like tiny gaps through the trees the views must be pretty good in the distance but you've not been able to see anything until now when it's just opened up. Oops, someone's just hit the rocks but thankfully didn't slide into the undergrowth and it still works. Ah, oh, dear me, silly, silly man. Right, five miles in today, coming from Chepstow, and we're at the Devil's Pulpit, and the view's down over Tinton Abbey. Isn't that something um, different? The way the tree has grown around these rocks. <laughs> So I found the geocache. It's a nice big ammo can as well. Don't see these very often anymore. Usually they get stolen. I need another hand sight. Now we've got the log book. Not much else in there. Ah, I wonder if I do that. Right, I've got a pen, so I'm going to sign this and then pop it back and we'll be on the way. Pretty big pine cone, I like that. I'm not going to carry it for another 100 miles in now. Can you hear that? It's starting to rain. Um, it is forecast showers today, they're not supposed to get heavy, I don't think. Um, I'm well under cover of these trees at the minute. Obviously when they start getting wet I'm going to get dripped on more. But it sounds like it's dying off, so hopefully it was just <laughs> a tiny bit. The rain is still falling, albeit very lightly at the minute. I'm just leaving the wood by the looks of it. Just taking a few minutes under the shelter of this tree while the rains pass by, just sat on a stile. Right, so here's the first sort of um, option in the path. You've got two options here. I've come from Magic Hill. I can take the lower route via Brockweir and the River Wye, or the higher route via the Hudnalls. Um, now, when I was plotting it, um, I, could, I, can, I can never decide, can you, you want to do both of these, but this one seemed like the um, most common one. So that's the one I'm going to do. I'm going to stick to the lower route, which is different for me because I always like to take higher routes. But I'm going to stick to the lower route this time and via Brockweir and along the river. This is where the Brockway Key was, was it? I guess it's that Brockway Bridge, I guess. That's just a random guess. I'm about to start walking along this river for quite a while, I think. village on a hillside. They keep fit living there. So the first view is of Biggs Weir Bridge. So there we go, that's 10 miles done today. Welcome to Gloucestershire. A little uphill burst from the bridge then. Back into the trees. 
into the trees is into Kadora Woods. My path is this way. There's a little car park here. The route I had plotted had me walking up the road to this car park entrance, but I've just done that very short section through the wood, which was signposted off as Dyke Path. So do that. No bridge. Oh. I'm going to put my walking stick pole with it. Bit of a squeeze that one. That big log looks like it's ready for my bump print. Right into Highbury Wood now. Here we go, look, I'm here through the wood. And when we come out the other side, we're at Lower Redbrook, where there's a store, I believe, and the next stamp for my passport. Pointless gate and I'm sure it had a purpose at one point. Here we go, treat. Steep drop this. Quite glad I'm not going the other way. Just got my second stamp at the Redbrook Village store. So that's the village stall where I've just got my second stamp from. I've also got a drink and a little caramel slice, and there's a little park over here, so I'm just going to go sit. Kissing the dog. Down on one of the benches. Tales of the Tin Men. I'm not going to stop and read all this, but you know how to pause, I'm sure. Right, I see a bench up here. Right, it's 2 p.m. now. I've got about three miles, I think, left to do. Which will take me about an hour. In an hour, it looks like it's going to absolutely throw it down. <clears throat> so I'm not going to sit here long. I'm going to get my backpack back on and get a shift on, I think. That's a mile now since I left Redbrook. Excuse the sweat. Constant climb from there. I'm still climbing up now. It has levelled out a bit, thankfully. Uh, I've got a bend. I'm just about to see what's going on around the bend. But wow. Oh, because it's forecast to pee it down. Hello, little in. Oh, I'll say hello to you while we're here. I've now done one, one and a half miles since I left Redbrook and most of it has been uphill. It's a real forestry day today, everything's been through trees and woods, which again has been great. I've been sheltered from any sun and rain, not that there's been a lot, it's been quite, pretty good weather wise. for a read. Did you scan that? I might tell you about it. There you go, it leads you to a Wikipedia page on it. Oh, that's where I am, look. That's pretty much my route. <laughs> so that means then this will be the roundhouse. Have a look at that. 
Wow, that's pretty impressive. And uh, that's where I'm heading then, is it? Is that Monmouth? Fantastic, what a view. Again, pause these if you want to have a read. I'm not gonna hang about and read them now. Um, again, because that forecast rain. It looks like I can ease up that weather bad weather front that looked like it was coming in has been pushed back an hour so I can ease up a bit actually um, 1.3 miles ago sorry that flick was me looking at the watch 1.3 miles ago so I'll just take it nice and steady now I've got a bit of a shift going on there mind the crocodile you're back in all the madness of town centres the hustle and the bustle the traffic Yeah, get me back in them hills. Right, I could see this bridge from that tower. Not sure if you'll make it out, but it's just to the right of this, sorry, to the left of this telegraph pole on the top of the hill there. That was that uh, roundhouse. And somewhere just around the corner should be my accommodation if I've plotted it right. So tonight I'm staying in the King's Head, which is a Weatherspoons. Another cheap and cheerful place, but I only need a room for a night, nothing else. So it should be just around this cup. Oh, here it is. So apparently, I'm at the top of the house, the only room up top. That's the size the lift goes. What is it? Hey, that's huge compared to that thing I had last night. The light work. Is it on the sensor? I'm not sure the light works in here. <laughs> I've got a bath or a shower. And I'm happy with that. 39 quid. I'm in the honeymoon suite. Apologies for the flippy floppiness, if you can hear my flippy floppies. But there we are to finish the day with Monmouth Castle.